Hey, how's it going everyone? Zookeeper Chris here. In today's video, I want to give an in-depth look at everything being added in today's free 1.4 update for Planet Zoo. So just to be clear, everything in this video is being added to the game for free, not as part of the Aquatic Pack DLC. However, if you are interested in that new DLC, I do have a video showcasing everything that's included with that. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to it down below, as well as a pop up in the top right corner now. Last but not least, if you're watching this video on patch day, you can probably catch me live right now over at twitch.tv slash zookeeper chris, where we will be playing Planet Zoo pretty much all day and chatting all about today's big changes. With all of that out the way, let's dive into today's video. First off, let me state the obvious here and say that this little area I've created is just for demonstration purposes only. This is not how I design my normal zoos, so this here is a judgment-free zone. Now, let's start off this video by talking about some changes you will notice when building habitats for your animals. First off, we have a new habitat barrier, thick glass, as well as a new glass habitat gate, which you can see to the right here, and a glass airlock gate for rides, which you can see in the back. Right off the bat, you will notice that this glass is customizable. You can select a section of glass and change the color of the metal at the top of the glass, as well as a second color option to change the color of the metal trim at the bottom. You can also select the concrete posts in between the glass sections to change those colors as well. You'll notice when you select the concrete post itself, there are two color options. The first one is for that concrete post itself, and also what it does is make any new glass panels that you create off of it that same color. And the second color option changes the trim of those new glass panels you build off of it as well. One last important thing to note here is that it does not appear you can turn this into one-way glass at all, so keep that in mind when designing your habitats. I think the main intention of using this glass is for when you're building an underwater viewing area for your animals. As in real zoos and aquariums, they would naturally use this thicker and stronger style glass to hold in the water. The next thing you will notice is that we have saltwater crocodiles in this display. Why? Well, that is because they are the only animal in the base game that will be able to use the new underwater box feeder enrichment device that was added in today's update. I do also believe that they will be currently the only animals that will be able to use the new diving mechanic. I did some testing with some other animals and none of them seem to dive down below the water. Now, if you have purchased the Aquatic DLC, this enrichment device is available for all of those habitat animals included, but for the base game, the saltwater crocodile is the only one that can use this and dive as of right now. I expect Planet Zoo to add more base game animals to this list in the future, so don't get too bummed out about this. With that being said, let's take a look at this new enrichment device. You'll notice that you can customize the colors, Secondly, you'll also notice that if I select this feeder that is just a bit higher than the two down here, we get a warning message saying that the feeder is not deep enough. So this is something that you'll have to consider when placing it inside of your habitats. Next up, let's take a quick look at the animations for when the keeper comes to refill the box, as well as the animations of the saltwater crocs coming in to use it. Okay, so we've got this keeper coming to fill the underwater box feeder here. He's got a bucket full of nothing. Okay, I'm not sure why he didn't bring the food. Okay, maybe we'll try next one. Okay, so I fired the first zookeeper because he was not feeding the animals for some reason. So let's see if this one comes in and uses the underwater feeder. Looks like she's going to fill it. Okay, floating on water. Very cool. Dumps it into the water and then we'll get a look down below the water. Let's just move on past that. <laughs> And now, as you can see, the fish start coming out of the underwater feeder and looks like we have one of the saltwater crocodiles coming down to munch on some of the fish. So it's really cool to see these underwater animations. Again, this is only going to be for the saltwater crocodile if you have the base game. If you did purchase the DLC, you will be able to use this with those DLC animals from the aquatic pack. But for the base game, it's just saltwater crocodiles as of right now. Again, I think they will add more animals in the future, but until then, we just have to enjoy this enrichment device with these saltwater crocodiles. On to the next new addition in update 1.4, the water temperature regulator. This is a new water treatment utility item which you can find in the utilities tab. 
As the name suggests, it allows you to control the temperature of any bodies of water within its range. Before you ask, no, it does not allow you to turn your lakes into ice skating rinks. Now, as you can see from the menu page here, you have a temperature slider that you can set. You also have the ability to change the range of coverage using this handy slider here. The range on this slider is quite large, so you can cover either just one body of water or many more if you need to. A big thing I want to point out here with the water temperature regulator is just how huge the negative guest impact is for it. For comparison, we have the water treatment over to the right here and the power transformer to the left. It is absolutely massive, so you'll want to bump up your scenery rating in order to lower the negative impact range. Over here, I quickly threw together a miniature jungle around this regulator, and it only has decreased the negative range by 20%. So best of luck to all of you in your journey to hide these things. My suggestion would be to just do what we do in Real Zoos and tuck these things behind the animal habitats, nowhere near the guests. One last quick thing to show with these water temperature regulators is that they have added a new heat map under the water section to show water temperatures and the coverage area of your regulators. Moving on, let's show off some of the new paths that have been added to the game with today's big update. For each of these, you'll see a mix of pathing with curbs, railing, and elevated sections just to show you all of the different styles included. First up, we have one that I know many people will be excited for, and that is the water path. I think this path looks absolutely beautiful, as well as the included railing that you can add to it. Behind the aquatic path, we have a new natural path, which comes lined with these little wooden planks and with the railing turned on, brings up these wooden railings in the back. And just behind it, I wanted to show how this path looks when it's elevated. Next up, we have brand new queue paths for the transport rides. To the left here, we have two variations of the beach board queue path, and to the right, we have two variations of the new wooden queue path. Further off to the side here, we have our first natural queue path. This path is basically the same exact natural path that we could previously use for guest walkways. The one to the left is with rails added and the one to the right is without. Next up, it's time to showcase something that I am always excited about and that is the addition of new foliage. I've laid down every size and shape of each plant here as we go along. First up, we have the beautiful water banana plant the fairy fan flowers up front, hydrangea bushes behind those, and in the back here we have some great new ground cover, the Virginia creeper onto the right here, which has quite a few variations, as well as some new variations of the wisteria plant, which is called wisteria fill. In the back here we have a massive tree being added, the ombu tree, as well as these weeping willow trees. And last but certainly not least, we have quite a few new aquatic plants being added. Up top we have the new blue lotus plant. And then down below we have the underwater eelgrass. And finally to the left here we have six different variations of the underwater temple plant. Up next let's take a look at another huge addition to the game, the animal talks. You can find these down in the facilities tab at the bottom under media devices and education. You'll notice when you place these down that there's quite a lot of information shown here on the panel. You can rename the Animal Talk up here. Down below that you can open or close the Animal Talk location, similarly to how you can control a ride. And not only can you place them in front of habitats, but you can also place them in front of exhibits as well. The one thing to note here about placing an Animal Talk in front of an exhibit animal is that they do not toss food to those animals. You'll also see that we have a scenery rating, as well as an indicator letting you know if it is close enough for the educator to throw food into the habitat from. Fun fact, you don't even need to place these in front of a glass barrier, you can place them in front of a brick wall barrier and the educator will still do the talk like normal and chuck food over to the animals inside. I believe the main thing to consider here when placing these is making sure that they are not in front of a body of water as the educators will not be able to throw food in. You'll also want to make sure that you place these in locations with plenty of space. These animal talks can be quite popular as you can see and the guests will take up quite a bit of space. Moving on down below, you can select which animal the talk is going to be about. Very handy if you have a multi-species display. You also have the timetable down below where you choose which month out of the year that the educator will give their talk. Below that, we have a very cool feature, and that is the ability to choose music to play throughout the speakers whenever it's not being used for an animal talk. 
Further below, we have work zone settings, as well as the ability to open up the new Animal Talks tab out of the Education menu. And finally, at the very bottom of the Animal Talks menu, we have the ability to customize the Animal Talks station, where you can change the bottom decoration, the top trim, and the speaker colors. Unfortunately, it does not look like you can change the color of the wooden panels here. When placing these Animal Talks, you'll need to hire the new educator staff position, and you'll want to make sure that you have adequate staffing to run the shows. For example, if you have 12 Animal Talks set up and only one educator, you'll quickly find out that there's just no way that one employee can run to each Animal Talk location and make it on time. Next up, we have a new Zoo Management tab that is dedicated to transport rides in your zoo. To get to the screen, click the Zoo tab and then down at the bottom, Transport Rides. This tab has tons of useful information for you and your rides. You can even make some quick and easy adjustments on the last Management tab here, such as open and close the ride, add ride vehicles, and change the ride speed. I definitely recommend checking this menu out if you have multiple rides in your zoos. Last but not least, we have the addition of a new time challenge scenario, the Copega Park, which is a map set in the Philippines where you will need to transform an area of disused rice terraces into a large booming facility with a focus on conservational awareness using the new Animal Talks. Wait a minute, how could I forget one of the biggest additions to today's free update? Multi-select in franchise mode animal storage. We can finally select multiple animals after buying them from the animal market and put them all into one habitat at one time. I think that covers up everything that is being added to Planet Zoo for free with a new 1.4 update today. If there was anything with this free update that I may have missed, be sure to let us know in the comments section down below. I also want to give a huge thank you to anyone who has watched my videos, subscribed to the channel, or has joined us for any of our live streams over on our Twitch channel. Because of your continued support, I was able to get early access to today's content so I could get this video out to you all as soon as possible. And of course, thank you to Planet Zoo for offering me that early access. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out a lot. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite part of this free update was. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and until next time, stay wild. Have a great Western- well, I can't speak. <laughs>